Ellen G. White My First Vision The Second Coming It was not long after the passing of the time, in 1844, that my first vision was given me. I was visiting Mrs. Haynes at Portland, a dear sister in Christ, whose heart was knit with mine. Five of us, all women, were kneeling quietly at the family altar. While we were praying, the power of God came upon me as I have never felt it before. I seemed to be surrounded with light and to be rising higher and higher from the earth. I turned to look for the Advent people in the world but could not find them. Then a voice said to me, Look again, and look a little higher. At this I raised my eyes and saw a straight and narrow path, cast up high above the world. On this path the Advent people were travelling to the city, which is at the farther end of the path. They had a bright light set up behind them at the beginning of the path, which an angel told me was the midnight cry. See Matthew 25, verse 6. This light shone all along the path and gave light for their feet so that they might not stumble. If they kept their eyes fixed on Jesus, who was just before them, leading them to the city, they were safe. But soon some grew weary and said the city was a great way off, and they expected to have entered it before. Then Jesus would encourage them by raising his glorious right arm, and from his arm came a light which waved over the Advent band, and they shouted, Alleluia! Others rashly denied the light behind them, and said it was not from God that had led them out so far. The light behind them went out, leaving their feet in perfect darkness, and they stumbled and lost sight of the mark and of Jesus, and fell off the path down into the dark and wicked world below. Soon we heard the voice of God like many waters, which gave us the day and hour of Jesus' coming. The living saints... 144,000 in number, knew and understood the voice, while the wicked thought it was thunder and an earthquake. When God spoke the time, he poured upon us the Holy Ghost, and our faces began to light up and shine with the glory of God, as Moses did when he came down from Mount Sinai. The 144,000 were all sealed and perfectly united. On their foreheads was written, God, New Jerusalem, and a glorious star containing Jesus' new name. At our happy, holy state, the wicked were enraged and would rush violently up to lay hands on us to thrust us into prison. When we would stretch forth the hand in the name of the Lord, and they would fall helpless to the ground. Then it was that the synagogue of Satan knew that God had loved us, who could wash one another's feet and salute the brethren with a holy kiss, and they worshipped at our feet. Soon our eyes were drawn to the east, for a small black cloud had appeared, about half as large as a man's hand, which we all knew was the sign of the Son of Man. We all in solemn silence gazed on the cloud as it drew nearer and became lighter, glorious, and still more glorious, till it was a great white cloud. The bottom appeared like fire. A rainbow was over the cloud, while around it were ten thousand angels, 
singing a most lovely song, and upon it sat the Son of Man. His hair was white and curly, and lay on his shoulders, and upon his head were many crowns. His feet had the appearance of fire, in his right hand was a sharp sickle, in his left a silver trumpet. His eyes were a flame of fire, which searched his children through and through. Then all faces gathered paleness, and those that God had rejected gathered blackness. Then we all cried out, Who shall be able to stand? Is my robe spotless? Then the angels ceased to sing, and there was some time of awful silence when Jesus spoke, Those who have clean hands and pure hearts shall be able to stand. My grace is sufficient for you. At this our faces lighted up, and joy filled every heart, and the angels struck a note higher and sung again, while the cloud drew still nearer the earth. Then Jesus' silver trumpet sounded as he descended on the cloud, wrapped in flames of fire. He gazed on the graves of the sleeping saints, then raised his eyes and hands to heaven and cried, Awake! Awake! Awake, ye that sleep in the dust, and arise! Then there was a mighty earthquake. The graves opened, and the dead came up clothed with immortality. The 144,000 shouted, Hallelujah! as they recognized their friends who had been torn from them by death. And in that moment we were changed and caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. Reading from Christian Experience and Teachings of Ellen G. White, pages 57 to 59.